Because it's unstable, but we'll see. Yeah, okay. If you get a problem, transfer over, as you said. Hello, good evening. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, yeah. All right, so welcome, everyone, um, to this community event working party, Monday the 17th of April. As per usual, um, any decisions taken here have to be ratified by the Leisure and Community Committee. Uh, but anything um, that the town clerk can delegate um, can be done so, or other um, members of staff under his control. Right, apologies for absence, please. Colin, are you there? I don't have any, although Councillor Marx is missing. I don't know if anyone knows if she's gone away for Easter. Mm. No, she's a she's a bit, I know she's done been unwell the last few days. Mm. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Uh, declarations of interest, request for dispensation item three. Or two. I'm not going to read it out. Any anybody? Sorry, Chair. Um, is Councillor Miller Jones um, said that she's got childcare? She was going to come off camera. But, um... Okay, we'll see whether she turns up or not. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, item three: declarations of interest. Anybody? Don't think so. Okay, let's move on to item number four: minutes of the previous me meeting held on the twenty third of January. Are you okay to put them up, Colin? Yeah, okay. Lovely, thank you. Right. Um, I can't see Councillor Lucarini if he wants to vote on this. He's even there. Okay. So can I have a proposal, first of all, assuming you've all read them? Councillor Tony Brown, seconder. Um, well, I probably have to... Hmm, interesting. Are you there, Councillor Lucarini? Oh, he's disappeared. If I find back in, I'll... Um, okay, right, sorry, okay. I think we need him, because um, otherwise we're not poor. I don't believe. Um. Yeah, you've got uh, Councillor Hanlon, you've got Councillor Davidson, you've got Councillor Burn, sorry, you've got Councillor Brown as well. Um, yeah, yeah, it's me, obviously, but in terms of members of the working party, does that matter? Um, yeah, we've got uh, Councillor oh, Hanlon Council and Councillor Davidson. Yeah. You've got Councillor Brown as well. Okay, looks like. I don't know what's happened to Councillor Lucarini. He says he's trying to rejoin, but... Okay. Oh, I, I've got... Right. I've got a um, proposal from Councillor Brown, so can I have a seconder then, please? Are you ready? Well, I'll second it then in that case. Nobody else is going to put a hand up. Uh, so all those in favour, please show. Right, thank you. Right, sorry, Kai. Um, are you able to re-show those? Lovely, thank you. So page, page one. Going down to page two. What happened about 
So I um, emailed her on the info at Starburgers um, email address and I haven't received a reply. Okay. All right. Thank you. Scrolling down. And as you said in the um, uh, the agenda that the um, terms of reference were approved, we'll get back to that in a little while. Uh, the beer was all on the agenda. I was going to say they're all on the agenda, is what I was about to say. And that's it. You know, it was item four and five. Uh, Corruption and members of the public. Are we, are we, presumably, we've had no other suggestions. Uh, no, that was there on the assumption that um, Wendy Aguirre would come back to us. Okay. Um, so that we could have processed that, um, but she hasn't. Right. Okay. Uh, right. So we should move on to item seven. Um, and we'll work, do this in order. Um, starting with the uh, beer weekend, which I think we basically said that we're looking for external things. I guess that's Sarah. Is that you? Anything to say on that at all? As you're muted. Colin, Margaret's trying to get in on the link, but nobody's letting her in. Oh. Neither Margaret or um, uh, uh, Councillor Lucarini are coming in on on the right on this link anyway that you're all on. <laughs> Do you want to just send them the link again, Colin? Because they're obviously looking at something. Yeah, else. I will do. I'll invite them from within the meeting. Yeah, Aaron, uh, Councillor Lucarini is not responding to me uh, on a different thing either. So, sorry, Sarah, you were you. Were, Okay, so beer weekend. Um, I met with Martin and Chris, somebody whose surname I can't remember from Steeple Bumpstead. Um, and they are very keen, they're from camera, and they're very keen to run a beer weekend um, with our help. Um, there wasn't any dates in the diary for this year, so we have pencilled it in for next year for Friday the 19th and Saturday the 20th of April 2024. So that is an okay. update on the beer weekend. All right, right. Guess there's not much more to say on that. Thank you for that. Um, moving down to the big day out, Wednesday 26th of July. Pro progress on that? Um, to be honest, there's... I'm not going to be a lot to say on any of them. I mean, there's a little, a little bit of progress on everything, but nothing is tied down completely. So um, for the big day out, we've got all the sort of skeleton things booked in, like a climbing wall, um, some inflatables, um, the first day, that sort of thing. And now it's just a case of working with um, Jill Moss, who I haven't managed to meet yet, to try and get some of the groups to come. Um, and we talked last meeting about a theme and I was thinking maybe it could be something very um, open like heroes and heroines so people could dress up if they wanted to we could have a fancy dress but that was the extent of what I meant when I was talking about theme something very loose that people could um, just make it mark marketing easier really yeah okay have you got anything, Gary, extra on that one? No, I haven't got anything on that, no. Uh, yeah, uh, chipping, Gary, I'm, I, although Sarah's doing it, you know, obviously you're involved, you, you work with, well, you all work with together. Lovely, thank you. Um, so I'm just, shall I just go through the... Go through the, go through the list, there's no point me reading the matter on the agenda. Oh, okay. So... Um... Sorry, I'm going to sex Sarah before you carry on, Councillor Brown. Yeah, um, do we actually keep a, a tally of the numbers that actually attend uh, the events? Just I don't, I don't think we have because it's like open on the four sides. It's yeah. really difficult to. I mean, Nick used to make a guess. Yeah, um, but I don't just, think we've got official numbers anywhere. 
No, I mean, it'd be nice to be able to, you know, without sort of putting too much effort into it, to sort of garner a, a rough idea of how many people come, you know, for, so that, you know, in following years, we can see how things are going and, you know, what works or whatever. I, I think I think we do have ballpark figures, and I think it is correct to say we don't have exact figures. Uh, obviously, when we run the events, and uh, I've been doing them with everyone else for seven years now, uh, we clearly have a ballpark figure because obviously we have to supply these figures uh, for licensing. Uh, but I agreed it would be good. And as Sarah did mention, the difficulty is, is that very often these events are open from all sides and you have a transient, for example, if you think of the picnic in the park, uh, they come and go as they please. It's not a set uh, across four or five hours. So mm. the difficulty is how do you account for those? Um, mm. Obviously a head count at, at certain times during the day uh, and so on and so on. Uh, I with, wondered if you could use like Google Analytics or something like that with you know, the, the amount of mobile phones that go there. You know. I, I, I'd be absolutely all for any kind of technological advantage we could have. Uh, John might know about that. I don't know. Collecting data. I think data, I've always said this, data is, is key kind of going forward. So yeah, I'm, I'm all up if we could do that, obviously much better. Obviously running a site like Haverhill in the park on the recreation ground that's completely secure. We had 99.9% .9 exact figures uh, that uh, term, mm. but obviously with the open events. I'll but. jump in, hang on. Yeah. Um, I've uh, seen text. Right. Let me, let me just clarify a couple of things. First of all, Councillor Marks was looking at the wrong list. She, uh, she was going into planning. It's not planning, it's community events. I've just sent her an email. She's, sitting in, she's sitting in a waiting room somewhere, Corinne. Uh, well, yeah, but uh, she she said she's trying oh, to click the planning. On, her, can you yeah. give her a ring, a ring, David, offline? Um, my resident expert, Councillor Lucarini, on on the Google Analytics is not here, but he'll be able to advise on how to get that data. Um, right. So if that's all right, Councillor Brown, I'll, I'll, um, I'm trying to find out where he is at the same time. Um, hang on a minute, I've just got some message here. What's this? Should be coming back, he says. Councillor Lucarini, hopefully. Right, um, nothing else. Uh, anything on uh, um, picnic in the park, Sarah, going down? Um, Colin, can you just, sorry, can you just check? Because Margaret's getting really, really frustrated. She can't get in. Um, I haven't got her in the waiting room. There's nothing I can do until she appears in the waiting room. Councillor Roach, could, you, could yeah. you just just tell her that the email that she sent me was for planning tomorrow night? It's a different. Yeah, she knows she knows that, but she was using the other one. She says, "I'll send, yeah, I'll send her a link." I'll, I'll just send it again to her. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye, sir. Um, yes. Yeah, so picnic in the. Park, a uh, similar situation. So we've got the first aid booked. Um, it's all booked through Sarah Yaxley. Um, there's some inflatables down, some face painters um, and some craft stalls. Um, one thing that we do have to think about this year um, is that we didn't handle the traffic very well last year going into the um, car park. So we need to think about that a little bit more. And Christine has said that the volunteers won't be available this year because it's a Wednesday. It's not a Wednesday. Um, and their volunteers only work on a Wednesday. So we will need extra help in the marshalling and things like that. Okay. I think last year I, I wasn't available. I was somewhere else. Um, I think it might be in development control or something silly like that on that day. Um, but we, did, we, we did struggle with the with the car parking and the traffic in the marshalling. Right. So it's going to be worse this year unless we can um, get some more volunteers in. Okay. I have put a general shout out on Facebook for volunteers, um, particularly for the Armed Forces Convoy, but, uh, but um, any other events we might have during the year. Um Councillor Lucrini says he's in the waiting room, Colin. That's the same as Mags. Yeah, I don't have a waiting room. I don't. I, I, there's nobody popped up on my screen waiting. Don't know what's going on tonight. Okay. 
Um, sorry, Chair. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, hang on, hang on a sec. Hang on, let me do this. I've just got an admit for Margaret Marks and Councillor Lucarini. I've got them. Why have I got the waiting room? Oh, it's John's fault. We asked, you're, asked you're hosting. Oh, are you? Am I? Oh, I didn't. You, I thought you were going to tell me if you host uh, transferred me. I thought I did. I'm sorry. I thought it should have come no. up as a message. No, I never got anything. Sorry. Um, sorry, sorry, Councillor Marks, Councillor Lucarini. He blamed me for that. That's five times yeah. I've, I've logged in and logged out again, and five That's times five. I've back, and I'm like, right. and the host says the host has got to let you in, and of course the host wasn't letting me in. It was very. No, That's fine. No, um, apparently um, uh, the host transferred it to me because of problems with internet. Councillor Davidson. Uh, Chair, just sorry. sorry. Uh, it's just, while we're on this subject of letting in, mm. um, I've just had a message from um, Councillor Miller Jones, and she said she's put in a very late apology to, um, to Colin. So obviously that's in his emails. Thank you. All right, thank you. Councillor Davidson. Thank you. Um, can I ask, because I wasn't at the last meeting, why has the picnic in the park be moved from the Wednesday to the Tuesday? Um, primarily to get all the events um, within a week to avoid extra expenses of loading trucks and having to unload trucks and uh, all that sort of stuff. But um, town clerk, uh, Colin can probably explain better than I can. Okay. Um, we could always is... flip the dates is a possibility. Um, we could talk to the Chalkston uh, uh, people and see whether we, if we swap the dates over the Tuesday and the Wednesday. I have actually booked some stuff in, so it's not quite an easy flip. But I can ask her, if because I'm meeting her on Wednesday, Jacqueline, I mean. Should I ask Just her? Just thought, because we weren't aware about the... Um, uh, this, so I know that um, it was only a week and a bit ago that uh, um, Jill Moss was telling me that she found out that the um, uh, East Town Park volunteers, uh, they literally only volunteer one day a week. And it means there's lots of people who want to volunteer for East Town Park can't because they're either not available on a Wednesday or um, the, uh, uh, the people don't need any more volunteers on the Wednesday. So um i we didn't realize that um east town park volunteers can only volunteer one day a week and can i put a second question please to sarah um last year there was an in, inordinately long queue for the face paint i'm presuming you've got more than one face paint for this coming year um i'm planning to have two thank you all right i'll leave that with you sarah to work out dates then yeah, as I say, I'm meeting Jacqueline on Wednesday and I'll ask her, but there is stuff already being booked in on both sides. So there will be a bit of jiggery pokery if we can do it. Yeah. Okay. For the benefits of those uh, that were sat in the waiting room, we are we're we're currently just talking about picnic in the park at the moment in terms of the um big day out and um the beer event. So it's explained that um the beer event is going to be done next year now, next April, and the, and the big day out is still currently being organised in terms of um, stalls and and facilities and and that sort of stuff. Right, thank you. Anything else on picnic in the park? While we quickly move on, right, so the big one. Um, well, no, actually, not the big one. Sorry, um, the the fun days. Um. Okay, so the fun days, uh, I'm talking to Jacqueline Lowry, I'm talking to Helen Cullet. we've got a few things booked in, it's all sort of chugging along, um, so not, there's not much really to report about that. Okay, um, there is going to be no, presumably no Parkway one, because it's in the, in the list, but um, I think... Uh I am in contact but uh, with the um, uh, 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 priest up at the St Felix Church, yeah. but it's it's been a bit of um, email ping pong at the moment. So um, I, th I don't know the answer to that question, but obviously the window of opportunity is closing. Yeah, obviously not this year, but we need to think about the other estates as well, and it, including the two new ones that are going up north of the town. 
whether or not, you know, we can't exclude all those, um, everything sort of south of the river, as it were. Um, okay, anything on the fun days for anyone? No, okay. Uh, the big one, of course, yeah. is the... Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry, just on the fun days. Will you let us know uh, about the um, swapping of the chalkstone and yeah. the table in the park, please, for our diaries or what have you? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And obviously, if anyone wants to volunteer for those, more than happy to, I'm sure Sarah will be, and, and Gary, we've well, lost Gary, there he is, um, be more than happy to take your help. Can I just iterate on that point as well and interject just to say that uh, I, we're in the process of sorting out the rotors slash uh, stewarding uh, for the events going forward. And that if anyone knows any volunteers, and I know John is, is hot on this at the moment, is if anybody does want to volunteer or knows anyone to volunteer, that they're to get in touch with us and start spreading the word as it is crucial within probably the next month that we start to compile the breakdown of who's who's will be delivering these events uh particularly across the summer uh just to make that a point of uh notice thank you yeah thank you gary yeah appreciate that right the big um the big one of course is haven in the park gary do you want to talk about this because you might have oh, spoken to can I, can I just inter interject slightly um one of the items from the last minute was down to me which was about sponsorship uh, I don't know how Councillor Lucrini's got on with um, Churchill, but I managed to um, get £2,000 out of Red Row um, to help us with our project. Um, Addisons, who are their groundworks engineers, um, have volunteered the use of some Harris fencing, although we have to look at it and decide whether it's suitable or not. Um, if it's damaged and dirty, you know, with mud all over it, it may not be suitable but we um, do that. Um, for Simon, I left it that we were going to um, apply for their monthly uh, grant fund that they have. Uh, they wouldn't actually give us specific money, which is fine, um, but they gave us another alternative to that. So there is a little bit of extra money coming in there. Councillor Lucan, have you had any joy with um, Churchill at all? No. Nothing yet. No, okay. Thank you. Sorry, um, Sarah and Gary. Um, I think moves, things are moving uh, slightly forward in terms of the paperwork for all of the summer events. Um, I've had a conversation quite recently with the uh, West Suffolk SAG uh, contact. Uh, and as we're not changing anything infrastructure or size wise or doing anything markedly different for Haber Hill in the Park this year, we more than likely will not have to attend an SAG uh, at West Suffolk, which is good news, which means we don't have to do the presentations and everything else. Uh, they will make a consideration whether we need to uh, do an SAG, depending on how we're going to deliver the further in the year events, such as Halloween and uh, the December Christmas shopping slash fireworks. Um, but that will be decided whenever we know what we're doing. But the good news is, is that the paperwork's coming on quite nicely. And I was glad that, to report back that the SAG is not required for Havel in the Park. Gary, just for the benefit as we're on a recording live, uh, just explain what SAG is. I know what it is, but. Uh, sorry, the SAG is, is the events action group, basically, where we have to uh, report back to West Suffolk licensing in order to gain approval to go ahead. We report back on any of our health and safety licensing, what we're actually doing. Uh, and the, usually that uh, meeting is attended by fire, police, West Suffolk, Suffolk, highways. Um, it's a roundtable discussion about what is being delivered. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, the preparation for the part of people, uh, picnic, uh, not picnic, part, Haven in the Park, uh, will actually start a day earlier this year than last year, try and reduce the amount of hours that uh, we're having to do during the day. So, but as we've got the experience from last year, we hopefully know what we're doing this year. Uh, last year was, um, so uh, as I say, any volunteers. Anyone got anything on um, 
Haven in the park at all to say. Councillor Davidson. Thank you, Chair. Um, just wondering if we could approach Zanofi, Genzyme, whatever they're called these days, in view of the fact that we will undoubtedly be agreeing to the solar park. They might want to reciprocate and put some funding in. And secondly, um, Tate, who have been obviously involved very much recently with the town centre, sorry, the, the art centre. Um, I know for a fact that they are very, very keen to be um, willing to sponsor. Would you like me to approach Tate? I think, yeah, any, I, I think we can. Hang, hang, hang a sec, Councillor Hannan. Um, any, anybody um, who um, is willing to sponsor, you know, big or small company, um, even if it's only 50 quid or, you know, 100 quid, is always better than nothing to help offset some of the costs. Councillor Hanlon? Yeah, um, Councillor Davison said about the uh, solar park. Um, we, it's on the agenda for tomorrow. We, uh, we haven't predetermined anything. So I, I hope he withdraws that. Thank you. Councillor Davison, have you got anything to say? On the assumption that the decision tomorrow is positive, after tomorrow's planning meeting, I would propose that we approach them to see if they would like to. I don't uh, think you sponsor. should uh, You should be linking any sort of funding like this to anything, um, regardless, you know, it, it's leverage. Uh, and I would argue that you shouldn't be doing that. I mean, I approach Red Row just, out, just to say that we, we run this event um, are you interested in doing anything? It wasn't anything to do about the fact you're building houses or whatever. It's just purely the fact I know the people at Red Row and I asked the question. So I think I think we should not uh, be putting that down as a thing. Go to any company you like uh, and ask them, you know, we have this event on well supported. Are you willing to, you know, do something, whether it's in kind, um, monetary terms for you know for so we put sponsorship up you know that's fine okay anything else on haven in the park at all i mean hopefully we'll soon know what sort of um bands and and events we're going to have on the stage uh i do believe that steve marsh is moving along uh, at pace yeah the bands uh so I, th I think he's in a happy position at the moment about how we're taking it forward obviously I'd, i wouldn't want to spoil the surprise by saying anything right now no 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 that's right and uh, i know he's doing his usual comprehensive spreadsheet of all the costs and everything like he did last year to, uh, to manage everything down to the nearest penny as he does okay anybody else on that Okay, let's move in. Let's move on then. Um, later in the year, probably a little bit early, but um, Halloween trail. So I lost Sarah again. There you are. Um, yeah, nothing has been planned yet, as you might guess. Um, but we had an internal meeting, and Dan had what the team thought was a good idea, which was to look at the possibility of relocating it into the town centre as a whole. Um, so a trail becomes a little part of it, but there are also other associated activities. So there could be a little theatre performance or there could be apple bobbing and stuff like that. Okay, what do, what do members think of that? The thought was that it would... Um, but the trail has been done quite a few times before, so this would give it a bit of a, a boost and that it would help um, the town centre businesses because they're more likely to get involved uh, and get enthusiastic about it. So that was the, the thought behind it. OK, Councillor Lucarini. Personally, I think it's a bad idea. Um, we, we, said, we said last time about, you know, making the event simpler again, within East Town Park that it goes back to being kind of the, the scarers or however scary they really are, but people kind of jumping out. Uh, I think this is actually just going to make it more complicated by putting it in, in the high street. I, I don't know how you actually manage the numbers of people. Um, obviously, it's, it's an, we'd have to get a road closure, I presume. 
what time of day are we going to do it as well? You know, will, will businesses actually be open or a lot of them probably will be just shut for the day? Um, I think the thought was it would be like Christmas night, but Halloween. So there would be various different aspects within it. It wouldn't just be focused on a trail. There could be like a, a scare maze or something like that. But just lots of little activities instead of putting all our tech um tech and staffing into one big item i'd be very nervous that we're going to destroy a very successful event i think one of the reasoning behind what well, part of the reasoning behind this was the discussion about how people engage with the event with per pound spend per person uh, and so on and so on so these this suggestion came forward from the notion that the town itself would be hosting the event rather than a single site and that it would be part of uh, the experience would be moving from site to site to site uh, gathering wristbands or gathering points or gathering something uh, one part of it would be a scare part the scare part certainly would not be dropped as we think as uh, as, as Aaron has said it is one of the key elements of the whole experience is that scary part but that the notion would be that the event would be moved across uh, the town centre rather than a single location. Uh, obviously, uh, it, it's embryonic um, and it will either be refused and will go back to the state, but I think it's an idea, idea worth pursuing um, in order for us to be able to, um, should we say, deal with crowds, present something new. Uh, I've been here seven years. I think the Halloween trail has been going obviously a lot longer than I've been here. Uh, the, the idea was to present a new experience to the town uh, and to present uh, people with more of an experience uh, for per pound spent. Uh, I believe that was part of the reason behind it. Uh, and also to present something fresh. Um, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, or it doesn't pass, it doesn't pass. But I think it's always good to have these discussions. Thank you. Okay, before I get on to the others, I, at the last meeting we, we mentioned about the cost of the 19,000 that last year cost, and we said we wanted to get that cost down. And I think we sort of agreed we wanted to go back to perhaps what we had before on a smaller scale. Equally, we've got the problem of the, the logistics at, at um, East Town Park because the amount of time it takes to set up in a day and everything. Uh, the scout ground it basically can't be used now anyway, um, primarily because all the buildings have been knocked down. Um, so there's nowhere to put anybody. So that was the background for those who weren't here. Councillor Marks, then Councillor Mason. Your... Thank you. Yeah, I know. I have to find on oh, here because it's a different setup and it's like, you know, it take 25 minutes to get in. I was at screaming pitch, I can tell you. Um, I, it, my, my view very much is it's always been an immensely successful event. You start diluting it a bit or actually making pockets you actually increase the demand for health and safety, you increase the demand for people, you increase the demand to make sure that, you know, these are young people who are coming to this and they're out at night and it is very dark. And I absolutely love the format we had before. We've never had people complain about the lovely format we've had over years and years and years and years. And to my mind, to some extent, you shouldn't change a winning formula. So I'm, I'm not really minded. You know, I think we, we have other events during the year where we can, uh, during the day, uh, and they run over days, where we can actually have these unique areas set up and we can look at expanding on that. But I think Halloween is something special. The kids all dress up for it. I have to say, year on year, seeing the children dress up to come to this event, the excitement of them in the queue, they don't care that they're queuing, they don't care how long it is. I, I just think we should be very careful not to change a winning formula. We have a reputation for this, and I think we should maintain it. Okay, thank you. Councillor Mason? Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Chair. Um, in, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of minded similarly to uh, Councillor Marks about uh, uh, not changing a winning formula. However, in fairness to the officers who have, by their own admissions, uh, said that the idea is embryonic i think it is only fair that we give him an opportunity to put more meat on the bone because with with any event uh, it's a design challenge and uh, i think so far what we've been presented with makes it hard for us to imagine and uh, 
you know, takes a little bit of, a, of the spirit and the mystic nature of being in the dark and the, the adventure. But that's not to say that something can be planned that could be stimulating, fun and enjoyable uh, as equal or, or potentially better than what happens at East Town Park. Uh, I, I think the embryonic nature of what has been suggested is exactly that. And uh, I'm minded to stick with the East Town Park. I'd like to give the officers an opportunity to put uh, a more detailed proposal forward for us to consider. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mason. Councillor Lucarini. You're muted. I'll just come back to Gary on um, kind of the idea of re refreshing events. I, I, I think that's important. I, I, I do like the idea that we, we don't always do the same thing. The only thing I'd say about the Halloween trail is, it, it, to me, that's fine to be the same because there's always a new generation of children that are, that are coming through. Um, so we, we, we're not; it doesn't become stale. We, we, we've got we've got new 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 children that find it absolutely amazing what what we've put on, and I, I think that's that's why it works. Um, so I, I'm really reluctant to change it. I, I appreciate what Joe is saying as well, and. It, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to explore the idea. Just just as long as it doesn't take up so much time that we we then don't have enough time to organise East Town Park if if that's what we want to do. Okay, uh, Gutter Brown, and then Gary. Yeah, um, I think I'm with. Um, well, I'm definitely with Margaret on this one. Um, it's a winning formula. It's a great setting down there. Um, I know you can't really control. Um, so, so well, um, the youngsters coming in, but it always seems to work. And um, yeah, I think you know, just work on on that same venue. Um, and as Margaret said, you know, it's got everything. It sort of you know ticks all the boxes down there. And it's a, it's a, it's a good setting, and it's a winning formula. Yeah. Thank okay. you, Gary. Yeah, I'm I'm quite mindful of of everyone's comments here, and thank you to those who are either pro or or con. And I think there's a couple of aspects operationally from this. Is uh, I'm also I'm quite mindful of uh, uh, Councillor Carini's point that it's a winning formula. It is a good event. And no one denies it. it. The East Town Park is not a good event. It is a fantastic event that's put on. It presents a massive operational and logistical issues. Um, the day is incredibly long for all the staff and we end up having to pack up in the dark at a very late hour. Uh, I'm aware that that presents challenges and also health and safety risks uh, with very often with uh, youths, etc. walking through East Town Park. Now, in the time that I've been here, we've, we've had very few issues. That's not to say that there shouldn't, there wouldn't be issues, etc., etc. So I'm mindful of the fact that for staff, what the public sees a very sharp tip of the spear uh, and the bit of the iceberg that sticks out of the water. There's a lot that goes on underneath that that delivers that day. Uh, and I think I'd like councillors to be mindful of that. And secondly, I'd also uh, look into the fact that I think maybe that there should be more of a, of a refreshment element to, to, to the project of the Halloween Trail uh, and to kind of not get blasé about the fact that it's a winning formula. Uh, and, you know, artistically, you know, we as a council, we want to deliver top scale events. Uh, and I think maybe just changing it up, you, you know, you can live and die with it. it. It could work, it couldn't work, it could present something else, uh, who knows? Uh, but I think if you, from, a, from an artistic and an operational perspective, sitting in the office delivering it, uh, we would like to maybe do something else, obviously, we're down uh, uh, to, to everyone's decision to make that final final decision. But I think uh, thanks to Councillor Mason to say, it is an embryonic stage and maybe we could put something together uh, that present to council um, and we can either see what happens from that point. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. I mean, from my own perspective, uh, I, I'm very conscious of the cost of Halloween trial per person. Um, when you look at it, um, I'm also uh, with other, uh, well, certainly with Councillor Lucarini, you know, we've worked 17 hour, 18 hour days with many of the off, um, the staff up there because we have to get in and get out on the same day, unlike the uh, scout ground. Um, and, you know, 
starting work at nine in the morning and not finishing until two or three o'clock the next morning is a long day for everyone. And as Gary says, it's, you know, it's not just East Town Park. It's, you know, you've got to get from one side of the uh, land to the other often because, you know, someone says, oh, I need this cable or I need this. And you end up, you know, walking long distances, um, which is fine, you know, but it, but it, at the end of, after 18 hours or 16 hours, you know, you start to feel it. Um, so there's that aspect of it. Um, equally, it is very uh, popular, of course. Um, we did agree there was going to be a smaller event um, and hopefully uh, a cheaper event, um, whether we find our own scarers, you know, uh, I'm talking about, you know, from uh, Andran companies or whatever, that might be good. In terms of the embryonic side of things, um, I do wonder, if we're going to do that, then maybe we should get away from the Halloween trail wording and call it something else. Um, I do wonder there was a suggestion last time, which I'm quite I quite like, is that we um move the Christmas fireworks closer to bonfire night. Maybe we can combine the two together somehow, you know, still have the fireworks, but have it um after any sort of event in the high street. I my I think my biggest problem is um is supporting the businesses and things i don't think necessarily the businesses will support us that's my big problem uh, we've seen it with um christmas uh, events in years and uh, not just recent years but years gone past you know 20 or 20 20 25 years ago whenever it was we had a really good christmas event in the high street nowadays um it tends to be more stall holders rather than shops so i i have it does worry me about that but equally, I'd be interested to know what plans there are there. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm a little bit like Councillor Mason, sort of on the fence. But I think for this year, I'm tempted to say this year I think we ought to be looking at um, East Town Park. Uh, there's a lot more going on. We got you know new council coming in, um, and maybe we ought to think you know start as soon as possible thinking about next year and and think about what we can do next year that's my personal view anyway um sarah or gary have you got any other or even colin have you got any thoughts um well the thought of doing it this year is a bit scary i must say okay, okay. Do um, you pun? yeah no. yeah so it, it could be something that we could work on for next year which would give us a longer lead time to flesh the idea out yeah, I, I, I'm, that's why I'm tempted to lean towards. Councillor Lucrini? I'd prefer that, Sarah, because I, I think that then gives time to actually put a proper proposal together and, and we, we can discuss it without there being, what, seven oh, months? <laughs> but, you know, seven months to go. It's not, it's not very long, really, to, to start talking about a whole new event when really we should be organising the Halloween trail probably now. Are yeah, we... I'm. Not, I'm not. I'm not uh, unaware of such factors, uh, to put it uh, that way. So uh, I, I do agree. And my my own personal take on it, it would be fantastic for a refresh, but the refresh has to be worked in such a way as that it works for everybody and includes all the classic elements what made the previous uh, event so good, uh, but introduce new elements that might actually surprise uh, the town. Uh, and actually get them quite excited about that. So that yeah. may well require in, in an order amount of planning. So I, I'm not aware. I'm not unaware of such issues. Yes. No, no, and especially with the uh, muting exhibition coming up and everything else that's that's um, being done. Um, Colin, have you got any thoughts? Any comments at all you wanted to make? Um, no, I think it's all been said, to be perfectly honest. I think um, uh, stay with East Town Park this year. Um, the budget is reduced as as per discussion last time round. Um, but that will give us a chance to, to think through. And I think Councillor Lucan is right. For something like this, I think Gary just said it really, let's get a decent business plan together um, so we're all really clear what we're talking about. Okay. Councillor Marks? Yeah. 
never find it right. Uh, yeah, just, you know, one of the things you've said earlier is that one of the disappointments now is our, our Christmas late night shopping. And that's been very flat for a couple of years now. Of course, it doesn't help the fact that, you know, half the town has disappeared and some of it is also corporate. So those people don't stay behind. They don't have that intrinsic value to belong um, and that's a tragedy. So I just wonder if you're going to put the energy into regenerating something clever and new, um, how about rather than reinvent the wheel with the, the, the Halloween, which is just such a success story on its own, as long as it's really scary, that, you know, we, we look more, if we're going to put energy into something, we look more into what on earth we can do for the late night shopping night that might um, attract people more, because that's the big, I feel everything else we do is pretty much a success, but that really isn't a success. It is charity stalls, and it actually last year irritated a lot of the shops as well. So um, so that's my view. Anyway, I just, just feel, you know, we've got one thing that's not working terribly well. Why don't we focus on getting that better? Okay, just just as a reminder, um, the we agreed that um, the quote late night shopping would actually be an all day event on the Saturday now. Yeah, no, no, I got that, John. I just felt that you know we're still we're still you know if we're going to look at doing some clever stuff to really make people it stand out a bit more, then you, you know we've already got that to focus on uh, because we know that's not been a success story. Whereas you know changing a winning formula is unfortunate. So. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we maybe we combine everything together. I don't know. Okay, um, so I think we're happy that we'll stick with East Town Park for this year, and then look at um, as soon as that's finished, start looking at next year, what you want to do next year, and come up with a, as, as Colin says, a business plan. Right. Should we move on to the uh, Christmas event and fireworks? Um, just mentioned it, you know, we're planning for an all day event. There has been some criticism um, from a couple of businesses uh, that we're not doing the late night thing, but um, uh, it's basically you combine it with um, uh, the market on the Saturday and um, Makers Market. So we have one big event all going on all day and then ultimately allowing enough time to to do the fireworks which may or may not survive next year in their current state they may be earlier or something like that i don't know any uh council mason you're muted joe again must be the most popular saying i think for the last couple of years yeah i mean i know it's been said before uh, but just in case there are any members here went at the last meeting just in support of some of the businesses on Queen Street, I understand the legitimate engineering difficulties that there are in, put, in putting lights in uh, Queen Street. I think what one of the legitimate claims is it just felt a little bit unloved and it's difficult, I know, uh, to find a solution to that. Uh, but whatever, whatever ideas there could be to try and make Queen Street more uh, of an attraction. I know there were things in Queen Square, but it was the journey through uh, from the junction uh, of High Street and Queen Street through to uh, 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 the Queen's Place that uh, it, it didn't look particularly festive. And, uh, and and just in respect to some of the businesses that I know have approached me about it, whatever thoughts or ideas we could have to try and, and generate uh, something for, for Queen Street, I, I know would be appreciated by those businesses. Thank you. Councillor Hanlon, then Councillor Lucrini. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I you did mention about putting it closer to firework night. Yeah, that, that's great. It's just that I'm worried about, because as some quite a few people said that we should have it on firework night. The problem with that is, is that we'd be in competition with quite a number of Cambridge and other places with that, and it will cut down tremendously on numbers. So just to bear that in mind, Chair, thank you very much. Yeah, 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 we did mention that. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen on that. Councillor Lucchini? Just on Queen Street, I think it's um, worth mentioning that there, there are lights in Queen Street. Every, every lamppost column has lights on them, and, and, and 
I think they have done for many, many years. Um, the only thing that's missing is they don't have like the icicles going along the sides of the buildings. Um, uh, you know, that is disappointing. I, I know the businesses that are, that are unhappy about it, but um, I know from we put the bunting down there, it was incredibly difficult to put the bunting up. There's, there's the lack of fixing points, the buildings aren't joined together. They go from, men, you know, they start off low, then they're, then they're really high up. Um, so, you know, it'd be quite an investment from, from Habel Town Council to put fixing points up and electricity points. Uh, I, I just don't think it's doable without, you know, some kind of help. Um, I, I don't know whether the businesses can actually assist us and, and, and you know, maybe they'd be willing to make some kind of financial contribution so we could, so we can um, put icicles the whole way along. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I go back to the painting scheme we had down there. Uh, you know, the vast majority of the businesses, um, unfortunately, um, said, well, we don't own the physical building. We, you know, that's down to the landlord. And, of course, the landlord said no or didn't answer. Um, Colin? I would um, echo what Councillor Lucarini has just said in terms of the uh, practicality. Um, uh, I had another visit with um, the uh, Ellsford uh, Electricals to look at what we could do down there. And as Councillor Lucarini said, the difficulty is that you get a, a brick building, you've got a decent um, anchor point on that. Uh, to reach the next brick building where you can get a decent anchor point, um, the buildings in between are are low um, so that the icicle lights would be going right across people's windows. Um, the distances are so great um, that we would need, um, uh, uh, you know, just simply couldn't um, put that length of lighting up. The, the tension to get it so that it wasn't draping so low um, would be far too dangerous for the anchor points. Um, one suggestion which Alsford Electricals flagged up and I've been um, investigating is um, I've been talking to uh, Rayleigh Town Council um, who have a similar issue in terms of they have a very, very wide street. And so uh, getting some of their Christmas lights in is very, very difficult. And they have temporary columns, street lamp columns without the tops. Um, which are in sockets. So the sockets are permanent with a cap on. Um, but for Christmas, the cap comes off and the pole goes in. Ailsford Electrical store the poles for the year and, and uh, install them. Um, so um, we've been looking at that and I've um, uh, con made contact with um, Chris Miller, I think it is, at... Um, uh, uh, Suffolk Highways, and uh, he's said that he's passed that on to a more suitable colleague um, to whether or not um, they would entertain um, street lamp columns, you know, additional temporary ones, because when we could put those in by the buildings that can't take an anchor point um, and effectively uh, try and uh, see if we can get a line um, uh, of sight for icicle lights etc that way to do something more um what i've said to highways is i fully understand that the utilities just under the road surface uh will probably will make this a non-starter but first and foremost i want to know whether highways will even entertain such an, a prospect um obviously the road isn't terribly wide and it, the carriageway would be quite limited i mean there are the way the the um paving has been done um you can see the width of the carriageway but it's it is quite narrow hence the reason it's one way um but uh, it's an idea and we'll follow if highways say to us um uh, we won't object but good luck with it uh then we'll go to the next stage and, and try and work out where the light columns would need to be put um, and then um, work out what utilities are under there to whether or not uh, it's even possible to uh, put the um, socket points in, because obviously that's going to be a fairly large lump of concrete. Um, uh, and then, you know, we'll put a, a cost together and see how affordable it is. To be fair, lamp columns 
they're not cheap, but not terribly expensive. It's the tops of them that are the expensive bit. The actual aluminium tubes are not terribly expensive. Yeah. If I go back to Councillor Mason. Steel tubes. Yeah, if I go back, thanks. I kind of, if I go back to Councillor Mason, just to um, uh, give my input on that is when we were doing the new bollards in the town high street um that took an inordinate amount of time and they're only very um in terms of depth were very small uh, i think they're about um i can't remember how much probably about 10 inches if if that um uh and they i know when they were doing the plans for that they had all kinds of engineering problems with utilities and things um, it sounds to me like a you know might be a good idea, but I'm just wondering worried about it. Um, Councillor Mason. Yeah, I'd just uh, like to thank um, Colin uh, for uh, at least taking up the challenge of considering the possible. Uh, I, I think to some extent uh, the idea that we're uh, exploring options. Uh, uh, or your exploring options it is good news for uh, people in the high street who ha do have those concerns. If it's not financially viable, then it's not financially viable. But I'd just like to thank you for putting the time in to try and find what could be possible. Uh, and if it comes to naught, then at least we've tried. So thank you for it. I mean, I personally would like, like to see lights in all the local centres we have as well, Layston, Chalkstone. Um, I don't know who's enabled closed captioning, but no. Um, uh, and also, you know, the new local centres we're going to have up on northeast and north uh, northwest Haven eventually, um, because you know, come Christmas time, of course, you know, that basically nothing happens in those places and and the other place, you know, uh, the other places we have local centres, but I think that's a while off yet. Okay. Um, Anybody, anybody else on the Christmas side of things? Okay. The next item on the agenda is data next meeting. Um, anyone else got anything before I do that? Anybody else got any? Uh, uh, Sarah? Um, it's just a little update that we've got some um, funding from Suffolk Community um, Foundation to do some art workshops. Um, during the summer so there'll be eight workshops that will take place in the art centre and at various places around town so a bit more summer activity if you could drop an email to people when you've got all the dates sorted I think it's really handy because sometimes the only times we see dates are like in these agenda things would be really handy to be have them well I could I could read them out so no no don't, don't don't no don't, if you drop them around just to all councillors or you okay. know just to um so we know what being planned okay. um i don't know setting this language to english but um and uh also just to uh this coming weekend i know it's got nothing to do with this where well, is a community event you got your um market this weekend saturday yeah, did you want to just say anything about that very quickly so uh yeah thanks to joe for giving us some locality budget for the buzz um theatre performance we've got that coming. Um, we've got some bug hotels, um, some various traders, um, a load of giveaways from Get Suffolk Reading and um, uh, Anglia Water. And then we've got some, um, uh, what are they called? Eco charities, for want of a better word, coming as well. The Woodland Trust and the RSPB. So, okay. And buskers. So, it's looking reasonable. Good. Thank you. Hopefully the weather stays decent. Um, and uh, just very quickly, um, uh, the September meeting, uh, September meeting, September market that you're working on, is that still the same day or did you change the date? I think at the moment it's still the same one. Okay. That's fine. But I haven't really started work on it yet. To no, no, honest. that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Right, so um, item agenda item eight, date to the next meeting is Monday 10th of July, after the election and everything. And thank you very much for everyone attending. And I close the meeting at 19.59. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Do you want to stop the live stream?
Oh, no, you can't. I've got to do it. No, I've got to stop it. I just realised. Sorry. I couldn't believe it tonight. Hang on, hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec, Margaret. Hang Sorry. On. Um, oh, hang on a minute. 